Dangerous Category 5 Hurricane Irma closing in on the Leeward Islands. And in sport, Trinidad and Tobago gets its last shot at qualifying for the FIFA World Cup. I'm Ricardo Roberts and this is Caribbean in 10 for Tuesday, September 5th. I'll be back with the details in just a moment. One winner, Brendan Leach, would spin at the exit of turn one. Gets offline, goes off into the grass. Here it is from his viewpoint. A couple of cones pay the price. Others have to take evasive action. One car crossing the track into the wet grass. As Leach went for that spin, Jordan Sherat, Austin Kazuba, Rafael Forcier in the 62 lock horns as they race up to the keyhole. Everyone tiptoeing. They're still battling hard up front, though. But wait, there's more. Max back with a float surge. Over to Andre. Andre's got to get up out of the sand a little bit. Has a roll shot over to Max. Dave with a nice cut. Max just putting that one over with a knuckle. Trying to go high over Max, and that's a big block. Oh, nice dig for a point. Eight for the score. Dave going over on two with a roll shot. Andre's there. He's so quick. He powers that one cross, but Max is there for a dig. Hurricane Irma, a dangerous Category 5 hurricane, continues to strengthen as it bears down on the Leeward Islands. Irma's maximum sustained winds have increased to 180 miles per hour, making it the strongest Atlantic hurricane since Wilma in 2005. At 11 a.m., Irma was 225 miles east of Antigua and 230 miles east-southeast of Barbuda, and moving toward the west near 14 miles per hour, and this general motion is expected to continue today, followed by a turn toward the west-northwest tonight. And on the forecast track, the extremely dangerous core of Irma is forecast to move over portions of the northern Leeward Islands tonight and early tomorrow. It is expected to remain a powerful Category 4 or 5 hurricane during the next couple of days. Flooding is, ex is possible as Irma is expected to produce total rain accumulations of 8 to 12 inches with isolated maximum amounts of 18 inches across the northern Leeward Islands. And residents of Antigua and Barbuda are making their final preparations in anticipation of Irma's passage. I have to admit that the uh, degree of preparation this time around, in my estimation, has been rather uh, good. We've gotten some reports that quite a number of the supermarkets are really busy at this time. So I would want to believe that the hurricane preparedness um, efforts are being intensified. Shutters are already buttoned down, everything in place. Um, just making the last uh, few minutes arrangement, getting the last set of batteries, um, putting extra flashlights in place, food is already in place. So, so far, staying ahead of the game. Public Relations Officer of the National Office for Disaster Services, Midis Francis, says there are 38 shelters available in the Twin Island Nation, and she has given advice to people who are considering using them. And what we want to encourage persons to do if they're planning to go to the shelter, you have to make sure that you do that in good time before the winds start to blow and so forth, and you walk with your food, non-perishable food, the water for drinking purposes and other purposes, and your medication, all the other emergency supplies, battery, operated radio, flashlights, and so forth, to really ensure that you're, you're comfortable. It's not your home, but walk with the necessary things that you would need to be comfortable. Bedding, not the mattress, but something that you can sleep on, and really be safe, take care of your family. Meantime, the Barbados-based Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CISIDEMA, says it has activated the Regional Coordinated Plan. It says the regional response teams, including the CARICOM Disaster and Assessment Coordination, the CARICOM Operations Support Team, and the Regional Security System, as well as the CARICOM Disaster Relief Unit, have been placed on standby. And CISIDEMA assures that it is ready to respond as required. Regional and international 
agencies and countries are also on standby to assist the islands in the event they are impacted by the hurricane, with the United Kingdom indicating that a ship has been positioned in the region to render assistance. The Office of U.S. Foreign Disaster Assistance has also already sent personnel into the region to provide assistance. And before the potentially cat catastrophic hurricane, Irma has reached the Leeward Islands. Another storm has formed in the Atlantic that forecasters say the Lesser Antilles needs to keep an eye on. Tropical storm Jose carrying maximum sustained winds near 40 miles per hour is 1,505 miles east of the Lesser Antilles and moving to the west-northwest at 13 miles per hour. The National Hurricane Center in Miami says some strengthening is forecast during the next 48 hours and Jose could become a hurricane by Friday. However, there are no watches or warnings in place at this time. Stay with us. Your Midday Sport is next. Well, boy, has the news lately been difficult to watch. Every other story seems to be about one group of people expressing hatred towards another. Neo-Nazi and white supremacist groups are full of hatred of what they see as an attack on symbols and statues commemorating the Confederacy. Groups like Black Lives Matter and Antifa are full of hatred over what the Nazi and white supremacist groups ideologically represent. But the problem I see, however, is not the views and actions of those extremist groups. Little tiny guy, number five though. Number five on the spanky vision. Well, apparently not. But fish number five, another little Larry. You know, I'm not giving up just yet. That's a decent fish. Yeah! Yeah, baby! Yeah! Yeah! Right. Woo! Catching a three-pound Larry during Raymond Bork's celebrity golf event. Look at the size of this thing, man. Yeah, daddy, huh? Yep. Football tops our Tuesday sports segment. Trinidad and Tobago has one last chance to qualify for the FIFA World Cup. The senior squad is set to take on Panama tonight following their disappointing 2-1 defeat to Honduras, which left them virtually staring at the end of their World Cup campaign. But veteran defender Rodanfa Abubakar, who will be among several players representing TNT for the last time, says the team remains upbeat since they have beaten Panama in Panama City before. This could be the last campaign, World Cup campaign for a lot of us, you know. Um, some of us are approaching 30, over 30 already, so we know this might be our last chance and our last shot. Um, it's, it's, of course, still mathematically possible. And um, I think the boys are still confident that, that, that we could turn it around. We've had good results against uh, the other two teams in the past, Mexico, and, and, and we played the U.S. at home. But we, we all focused on Panama and getting three points there and then hopefully taking that momentum into the, to the final two games. Abu Bakr believes they still have what it takes to qualify for the FIFA World Cup. Well, yeah, we've got to recognize that, um, yeah, this is our last chance here at, at this campaign, you know. Um, give everything, um, work for each other, play together, show the character that we have inside of us, you know. Um, I think we have that. We, 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 there's still that belief in the camp, of course. And um, I think we're confident we can turn it around. Over to cricket now, veteran stroke maker Marlon Samuels had praised the West Indies for their dramatic comeback in the ongoing test series against England and also defending the players against criticism from pundits in the media. The Caribbean side was crushed three inside three days by an innings and 209 runs in the opening test at Edge Baston, but rebounded to stun the host by five wickets in the second test at Headley last week after chasing down 322 on the final day. That's Caribbean in 10. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Good afternoon. <laughs>